This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Well, on May 13th, the tournament for the U.S. title was at the Sam Houston Coliseum in front of 4,800 armed. You wrestled Dr. Death in a non-tournament match and were defeated for the dreaded, with the dreaded small package, should I say, not the Oklahoma Stampede for which Dr. Death was, uh, was famous for. But the important thing that happened that night was Barry Windham winning the U.S. title by defeating the Midnight Rider. Okay, it was it was the Italian Stallion. In the quarterfinals, earning a bye in the second round due to a double elimination. And then he beats Nikita Koloff in the finals. Barry defeated Nikita by pinfall while using the ropes for added leverage. Excellent. It happens, Arn. There's been a lot of amazing men that held that United States title, the belt that signified who the number one contender was. And, of course, the man who carried the title was a heartbeat away from the big goal. That's what it always meant back in those days if you were the United States champion. Is there any better representative of that characterization at this time than Barry Windham in your estimation? No, and you know what? It was well known that the U.S. champion was in direct line to get a world title shot. So if you're sitting around on your couch and you're a pretty educated fan and you're thinking, okay, Barry's just joined the horseman, now he's the U.S. champion, what's going to happen when that opportunity comes up at Flair's title? Mm, good point. Is he going to cash that in? Is he going to push for that or is he going to let it go and be happy with his own success right now you know it opened up a lot of conjecture it's fun too to think about because around this time frame after he wins the tag the uh, u.s title this is also the time that that photo is snapped which i'm sure you see at many autograph shows of you guys with all the belts Rick yep. with the big gold, he with the U.S., and you guys with the tag titles. And I'm sure you autograph that picture many times over at a lot of these fan conventions. Yep, and most people say that was my favorite. Yes. You know, there's a lot of only fans out there that like the first group, but Barry, from a performance standpoint and making credible matches be even go to another level, he was the guy. All right, well, we're going to get to that because I have a fun question for you as we get to the end of the show. On May 15th, 15th, JCP recorded television from the Civic Arena in Asheville. This was a matinee show with 500 in attendance, and the show didn't air until May 28th. You and Tully win an enhancement match in short order against George South and Bob Riddle. George, still getting it done, has a wrestling school and doing some good things there. Arn, it's May 15th. And numerous times on the show, the Great American Bash was mentioned by an assortment of the talent. The dark match of this taping saw the Horsemen in a six-man tag match as Flair, Blanchard, and yourself lost to Sting and the Road Warriors. Sting substituted for Dusty, who was advertised. And believe it or not, we have, once again, the actual ad from that newspaper. Let's check it out. I love these, these newspaper clippings, and I want to show this one to you. Here you go. So there it is. Six-man tag. Dusty Rhodes and Road Warriors were advertised against you, Tully, and and uh, and uh, and, and uh, the Nature Boy. It ends up being Sting on this card. You can see Asheville Civic Center, May fifteenth, two p.m. Arn, there's your kisser on the right-hand side with Tully and Rick. Nice. They had they had that stock photo. You can see the rest of the card there. They had the Fantastics versus the Midnight Express. Uh, and uh, what else? We got live TV taping, NWA Worldwide TV uh, programs with such stars as Sting and Koloff and the mighty Wilbur, Johnny Ace. Johnny Ace! Oh, now, uh, now John Laurinaitis in WWE. There you go. But uh, that's the actual uh, newspaper clipping. Pretty cool. I'll point out something that may or may not stagger you a little bit. I love it. Look at the price of the ringside seat 12 bucks now wow. that's reasonable that's reasonably priced and if you're going to take your family like you know like we said when we first got to crockett they were running towns weekly and semi-weekly 
if you're going to go three weeks out of a month or two weeks out of a month and take your family, that's pretty reasonable price for a ticket. Could you imagine $12 to sit ringside to see Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, who was advertised, but Sting, the Road Warriors, but Arn Anderson? You get to see Arn Anderson? Are you kidding me? This is I look, incredible. I look better up close, too, I'll bet you. You know what? They used the same stock photo for you in last month's uh, clipping. They weren't getting you in the pink shirt with the 21-inch bicep and all this. This was like the darked out, dark out sunglasses, you know? Yeah, and the beards, the shits. Yeah, the beard. Yeah, I didn't have the lines right on the beard. So <laughs> they could have taken a much better photo than that, but that's okay. It's still fun, and this is fun. This is history to go back and look at. So again, thank you, Richard Land, for digging this out for us. These are these are great, great clips, newspaper clippings, and we hope our audience is enjoying them. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.